Hello my friends and welcome, let's go firstly to the front lines, it seems like we have some of the good news happening for Ukraine especially. Let's zoom to this place between Bakhmut and Avdivka. So this is Avdivka, this is Horlivka and here we have the advancement of Ukrainian army towards the place. If we check out the map legend, reported Ukrainian territorial gains in the past 24 hours shown in dark blue color, so definitely it is like that on this military map. Before Ukraine advanced in this area, pushing Russian forces away, taking this hill under control. And today we have the similar advancement, but this time to the southeast part. The current advancement is very successful because there are some rivers in this place over here and one goes over here. It means that Ukraine was able to cross both of those rivers. And now it has the attack vector towards the Russian positions at the very important elevation of 201 meters. Speaking about this hill, Ukraine put the flag over there around 10 days ago, but Russia pushed our forces away from the hill. It is very hard to take positions over there because there is almost no cover. But Russia failed with their further south towards Ukrainian controlled territory. So now it's time for Ukraine to advance southbound. Before we continue with the latest update, let me tell you about the sponsor and the partner of my channel. Yes, as usual, it is the Atlas VPN. They came out with a Christmas deal where you may get the Atlas VPN Premium just for $149 per month and you'll have 12 months extra. This is the best offer from all of the Premium VPN services out there. It has military encryption standards strongly securing your data and your device from being reached by government, unwanted ads and also hackers. I use the VPN all of the time and for me personally Atlas VPN is the best VPN out there. It has a security breach device monitoring feature so it alerts me that someone tries to reach my device then I use the public Wi-Fi. Then I see that message I disconnect from that public Wi-Fi. Atlas VPN is very fast. It guarantees you the best streaming connection then you watch movies on Netflix. And also by changing your virtual location you may get access to watch all of the movies all of the series on Netflix platform and now my friends please check out my personal link in the video description just below or scan the QR code available on the screen where you may get the record-breaking Christmas deal from the Atlas VPN just 149 per month plus 12 months extra my friends it's the best offer that you may find on the market right now also, it is valid just for my followers, so hurry up to join the club. Alright, so we have already the confirmation about it on the 3D map, so Ukraine goes towards this hill, the elevation of which is 200 meters. It is lower compared to this huge hill, which Ukraine took under control but forced to retreat, and the advancement is happening in this valley, so Ukraine used the high ground at first to move forward. Behind this hill there are mostly fields, but a little later the Horlovka city starts, so it seems like Ukraine still has the ambitions to advance in Horlovka at some point. Yes, for now we may say that Ukraine is out of the resources for this operation, but our command is preparing the ground for possible future achievements. There are the places on the front lines where Ukraine was forced to retreat the forces, for example Marinka, and also the places where the heavy battle is ongoing, for example Avdivka or Nove Mihailovka. And also there are some spots where Ukraine is still capable to gain the ground, so Russia still doesn't have the full initiative on the front lines, even though they say that they have already broken the situation in their favor. So what's about the perspective of this operation? Probably Ukraine found the weakest spot in the Russian defense. We can see the Russian defense lines on the south, and also there are some on the north over here, but here there are no significant defense lines because the terrain is quite difficult. Terrain itself plays a great role in helping Russians to defend the area, but at the same time, in this difficult terrain, Ukraine forces might find some place to hide, especially in the urban environment, for example, in this village over here. This is the industrial place with lots of the underground space for our forces to stay. You need to have some of the safe point, for example, with command center center with the forces rotation and also maybe with hospital. From that point Ukrainian army might advance in the further movement 
forward and forward, organizing the new bridge heads. And in Horlivka case, it's very easy to do because there are lots of the basements. It's the industrial city. Remember the Ukrainian defense of Mariupol and Azovstal factory, where our guys hide it underground for a very long time, and Russians couldn't do anything, even targeting the place with aviation bombs. Finally, Azov got the order to surrender to Russians and I think it was the big mistake done by Ukrainian management because most of the guys are still in the Russian prisons. Here Russia might also try to use some of the aviation bombs, however, they lower the intensity of their aviation so they do not use their bombers as they used them before because they lost many of the airplanes recently, so now they do afraid of the Ukrainian air defense. I wonder if we have the long-range air defense system somewhere on the east, on the south for sure. <laughs> So my friends, awesome news for today, the advancement of Ukrainian army at the same place between Bakhmut and Avdiivka towards Orlivka. Successful advancement. Unfortunately, we have not so good news coming from the south, at the point where Ukraine advanced during the summertime in attempt to counterattack the Russian army. Sadly, but Russia accumulated lots of their reserves and they start to push Ukrainian army from the south. Also, they try to go towards Robotne, unfortunately. So today they have took this place Place under control, let's check out the other source. I refer to the same military analytic, Mayakovsk 73, he publishes quite precise maps, and here we go with the Russian advancement. They've took quite a lot of fields, unfortunately, today, and their infantry was spotted even in this place. They have surveillance, they use lots of the artillery on the place, and even targeted Robotina with ballistic missile. I think that Ukraine finally will not be able to withstand the Robotina village, unfortunately. Ukraine got quite lots of the ambitions with this counter-offensive operation, trying to liberate Novoprokopovka, Verbova, penetrating many of the Russian defense lines, but now, unfortunately, in this place, we don't see the advancement operation of the Ukrainian army basically because of the lack in the resources and Russia took initiative at this particular point. Okay, we have just received the latest update from the deep state military map. They confirmed that the enemy moved towards Robotine on the east from Robotine and other we have minor updates on the front line. So deep state military map still hasn't confirmed the advancement of Ukrainian army towards Horlivka. But I believe that this source keeps some of the posts in Ukrainian advancement as usual like one or two days. So let's check out the timeline. It was yesterday and it is today. Definitely Russia took some of the ground. Now let's go to the Kherson area, the Krinky village. There Russia tried to attack once again. I think that it is already their fifth attack towards the village, I mean the major attack using the infantry vehicles and some of the tanks, but all of those attacks so far failed. I wonder how Ukrainian army is able to do it, I mean to repel the Russian attacks, because Ukraine hasn't got any tanks, maybe just a couple of the armored vehicles that were sent across the Dnipro river. Well, we have artillery and FPV drones. FPV drones are doing fantastic job on the front lines. A famous Ukrainian commander Magyar showed today the video from Krinky. He showed one more Russian convoy that tried to attack the village. Guys, unfortunately, I am unable to show you everything on this video because of the platform rules, but I have the Telegram channel and there I upload more information, so to be updated, please subscribe for my Telegram channel. Thank you so much. There were many of the infantry vehicles and lots of the fallen infantry. Most of the devastation was caused by the Magyar drone unit. On his press conference around 10 days ago, Vladimir Putin, the Russian so-called president, said that Russia has no losses in Krinky. Well, he said that they have those, but those are the sanitar losses, so they are not connected to direct fight. But based on the images and the Russian devastated convoys, we might say that they have quite huge losses in Krinky. I believe that they had already lost around 1000 soldiers out there. Now, in most of the cases, they just send the infantry forces through the forests because it's more convenient for them because they have tremendous losses in vehicles and they want to send them for the future operations. That's why they have huge, dramatic losses in their soldiers. 
And to prove my words, let me show you the road to Krinky. So here we go. Lots of the tanks, lots of the infantry just lost on the way to the village. It's crazy. Couple of words about the Russian ship, which they lost the day before yesterday. I think the situation with this one is already understandable. Finally, after two days, the rescue ship arrived to the Feodosia port to save the crew. And the fire team starts its operation. Just on time. About the Russian sailors, well, it's been reported that there were 77 crew members on board by the time the missiles hit the ship. There were many of the young soldiers, even 18 years old. Those are the mandatory conscription service soldiers. They hadn't signed the contract with the Russian army. It's the mandatory Russian army service. They serve usually just for one year and after it they are free, but Russia tries to force them to sign the contract to prolong their service. By the way, Ukraine also had this system, but cancelled it then the war had started, the full-scale war. But Russia still has it, and many of those kind of the soldiers also lost their lives then the Moskva ship was targeted. We call those soldiers srochniki, so urgently mobilized or compulsory mobilized. They usually do the most dirty job on the ship because they don't have the specialization, they don't have enough time to go through the special training to handle the ship systems on a qualified level. And as you see, they stayed on the ship even though it was in the port and under the big threat of being attacked by the Ukrainian cruise missiles Russia simply doesn't care about their soldiers. It is simply cheaper for the Russian army to ask those soldiers to stay in the ship rather than to rent the accommodation for them in the city. No, it usually doesn't happen. Russia says that just 33 persons are missing, but I don't believe that. And we have received more detailed satellite images from the Fedor support with the Russian big landing ship. So it was before Ukrainian missile and it is after the Ukrainian missile. So ship is definitely severely damaged as well as the part of the port infrastructure. The source Newsweek says that there could be F-16s already in Ukraine, but I think and I'm sure that this information is fake. Well, the source says that all of the recent achievements by Ukrainian army by targeting the airplanes or the ship in the port says that Ukraine is using F-16s, but it's not like that. I'm sure that Ukraine will show F-16s then they arrive to Ukrainian army. Okay, it's hard to tell then and where this tank was targeted. The video was released by Ukrainian SBU forces and the FPV drone again went to the vulnerable part between the turret and the tank base where lots of the shells of the tank are located and you see what happens then all of the shells detonate at once. I think that from all of the videos that I have seen this one shows the highest achievement of the Russian turret space program. And also it shows the greatest disadvantage of the Soviet made tanks they are small, yes, compared to their Western competitors. Their silhouette is very thin. They have just three crew members. They have nice armor. Plus, they have the automatic reloading system. But the drum itself, I mean the shells, which are coming to this mechanism, they're all around you. It's not safe for the crew. But there are some Western-made tanks, like, for example, old Leopard 1, which also has the shells in the same place with a crew. It's not not a great idea. Plus the Leopard 1 is bigger and has the thinner armor compared to the Soviet-made tanks like T-64 or T-72. That is why we don't see many of the Leopard 1 tanks fighting against the Russian forces just on the front lines. There was a single case. Russia targeted the tank with artillery and our guys luckily left the tank and they're okay. And the tank later on was probably evacuated. So here again I say that there is no perfect tank, but the Soviet-made tanks, they have the disadvantage which is quite huge with all of those shells around. So if you hit the proper place, you have pretty much big chances to kaput all the tank at once together with the crew. Okay, finally Ukraine start to dig more trenches not far away from the front lines. It's a good sign. We need the same or similar defense to what Russia did on the south to stop the Russian army. Because if the current situation with supplies for Ukraine continues, 
well ukrainian army has no chances for the further advancement and it needs to think about the defense the developed defense and i'm very happy to see those pictures coming from the front lines all right it is the final military support for ukraine from the united states of america this year the united states gave 250 million dollar support again ukraine doesn't have those funds directly those funds are invested into the military sector of the united states themselves they produce weaponry or they restore the old weaponry and after it they send everything to ukraine so here we may speak only about the operational costs the cost of the resources to produce the ammunition and logistics hopefully the united states of america next year approves the budget for ukraine according to nikkei asia news agency putin warned xi jinping that he will continue the war in ukraine for at least five years he reassured the chinese leader that finally russia will win this war that is why all of the talks about the peace with russia have no sense putin is definitely determined to achieve his goal russia has improved the production of the weaponry now they produce 300 of the advanced tanks per year like t-72 b3 or t-90 plus they still have lots of the old tanks they produce more artillery barrels for artillery and artillery shells plus their allies are willing to help them at once it is crazy that north korea has already sent 1 million artillery shells to the russian federation by the time then ukraine got 300,000 artillery shells from all of the european countries that promised us also 1 million shells per year so i want to be honest with you i want to remove the pink glasses the current situation is not good for ukraine yes ukraine has the production of the weaponry but it's not even close to the russian production the long-term war is always about resources who has more resources wins unfortunately now i don't see that western countries are willing to overhelm ukraine with more resources compared to russia and their allies if we do not wake up as democratic states finally dictatorship will prevail on this planet guys like putin and xi jinping will rule the world because in the current conditions unfortunately those pricks show strengths but the democratic countries they show i would say uncertainty in support of ukraine and that what makes putin to think that he is on the right way to achieve his goal Russia has already shown their North Korean shells, so those look like that. Actually, Russian artillery say that those shells are not that great compared to the Russian made, but still they fire. I believe that it is 152 mm caliber, but I could be wrong. The shells are not new, as you can see, there are some signs of the storage on them. All right, and just a brief update about the situation in the Gaza Strip. As you can see, IDF propels elsewhere especially here on the north the active phase of the operation the gaza city was divided into several parts already three of them it happened very rapidly israel advances with two of the vectors so soon they're gonna take all of this part under control i am sure about it and they have already started the new vector of attack towards brue and the nusirait camp and they also advance from this place two here they perform many of the attacks so i believe they need again two of the months so in february they'll take full gaza strip under control that's my prediction based on the attack pace of idf which intensifies i think that the resistance of hamas dries out so here if we go to the northern part the advancement of idf is significant there were no any attack vectors from those sides but just in a couple of days they've divided this part into three major parts and they will continue to push push until they have everything under their control okay so this is the latest update as you can see the red area shrinks hour by hour my friends please don't forget to press the like to this video and also check out my personal link in the video description just below where you may find the atlas vpn premium with a huge christmas discount that was done especially for my followers so hurry up to join the club i wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time